Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of RTP Behind the Scenes. Today we are talking singing. Today I am going to show you how I approach getting ready to sing Rush. So I hope you enjoy. and welcome to another episode of RTP Behind the Scenes. Today, we're going to talk singing. I get a lot of questions after shows, always some variation of, how do you sing like that? When did you first find out you could sing like Getty? How do you sing that high? How do you sing for a whole night and not be sore? And, and things like that. And that's a lot of different questions. What I'm going to focus on today is how I attempt to sound like Getty. Now, we're two different people, and if you A, B, if you put it side by side, you're totally going to hear the differences between him and me singing. Um, but the goal is, with the Rush Tribute Project, is for me to get as close as I can to the feel, to emulate the style and the, and the emotion and, and the, um, the nuances that he brings to the songs. And so when I work on these songs, there is a, a set of steps that I take to make sure that I'm as close as I can be on any given night. And the steps, uh, as I'm going to illustrate here, they can be, they can seem like, oh, that's really slow. I don't necessarily do them as slowly as I'm going to be showing here, but I just want to give you a sense of where, how I approach them and when I get there. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a small portion, the first chorus of Limelight, and I'm going to walk you through how I would approach practicing and getting ready to perform that song. All right, so first things first. Step one, uh, get the shape of the melody. Without knowing the, the shape or where I'm going, I don't always have a good sense of how I should approach singing with breath and all that. So, uh, for Limelight, it's pretty much just Living in the limelight, the universal dream For those who wish to see Right? Now, that sounds like a pretty bad piano version of Limelight. But that's the start, right? That's the shape. So, that would be step one. Step two, I take that shape, and then I try and figure out what are the styles? What are the accents? Where is he adding flavor and, and moving around to that? And to do that, I'll listen to the album uh, a million times or so. Uh, a lot of times, because we've listened to these songs for so long, I've already got a pretty good sense of where to go. But it doesn't hurt to listen. It's very often that we have in our head, oh, it should be like this. And we're convinced it is. And our memories aren't as good as we think they are. And then we go back and listen and say, oh, I didn't know he did that there. Um, that, a common thing happens, uh, people expect songs live to be faster than they actually are on the album. Then you go back and listen to the album and say, wow, that's really slow. Uh, and this is another example. I thought he went up here. Nope, he goes up there in the next verse, not in the first one, that kind of thing. So let's um, go over to Getty himself. So I've got uh, an isolated track for Limelight. And so let's listen to what he does and just listen to the whole phrase first. And then I'll go back and I'll pick apart the things that I would do based on, on what we hear here. So here is Getty in the first chorus of Limelight. Living in the limelight, the universal dream for those who wish to see him. Yeah, he's not bad, right? So what happens there is he's got a lot of notes that he's sliding into and sliding out of, just as part of the style, and where he adds vibrato. Um, and we'll get to pronunciation after this, but let's at least get the shape with the style that he's got going on. So again, take a listen. Living in the very beginning. Living. It's not just living. It's kind of sliding. Living. Living in. So here's the first thing. In the limelight. The Second is limelight. So he's sliding up. Living. And then he slides down. In the limelight. The universe. Oops, and I think I just missed that. Light, the he slides back up. The universal, universal dream. And then dream. He hits that twice. Now, when people do that, dream, what's actually happening is he's taking that pitch, dream, and then he's scooping down and back into it. So if you if it was really slow, you'd hear him say, dream. But he has really fast. So it's dream. For those. Again, for those. Several slides, several slurs down into that. Those who wish to see. And then notice at the very end, he actually adds vibrato. He didn't 
throughout the rest of that phrase. So if we listen to that phrase again, listen to the very end and listen to him kind of shake, have that vibrato at the very end. Living in the limelight, the universal dream for those who wish to see. Right, just kind of adding that extra vibrato just at the end. So the rest of it is pretty straight. So all told, instead of living in the limelight, the universal dream, it ends up with living in the limelight, the universal dream for those who wish to see with vibrato at the end. Which, okay, so now we're starting to sound more like limelight. We still don't sound like Getty, but now we at least sound like we're singing the song within the right style. So then the next step is I got to make myself um, who is an upper Midwest person with a not quite Canadian accent uh, to sound more like Getty. And the first thing to do is pronunciation. Now, being Canadian, he has specific vowel sounds that he uses. And Getty also tends to emphasize certain vowels depending on the song. And it changes. Um, early Getty doesn't sound the same as like late, seven, late 70s, early 80s Getty, which doesn't sound the same as 90s Getty and as 2000s Getty. I mean, it, he really does evolve with the way he approaches the songs. But, so for this one, if I were to listen to just the pronunciations, the main things to listen to are vowels. Vowels tend to be what we change when we have accents. Getty also makes good use of consonants, holding on to consonants or hitting them hard in the same way that John Anderson from Yes does. I'm pretty sure he got some inspiration from that. But you can hear him, uh, you can hear him attack and hold on to, to consonants in some songs. Here though, this is a very smooth, very vowel-centric Part. So listen to the way he pronounces his vowels. His vowels are going to be spread out a little bit more than mine. Maybe not as much as yours, but a little more than mine. So just listen to the, again the first phrase. Living in the limelight, the universal dream. Just right there. Living in the limelight. He, he opens his mouth wider and it gets a little lower. Limelight, the universal dream. So there's a lot of motion going on in his jaw when he sings. And he does that on purpose. That's part of the emotive um, quality that he adds to the song. And so the second half. For those. For. Not for. For. Those who wish, those who wish to see. Wish to see. So again, that's that E sound gets spread out. So the whole thing would sound instead of living in the limelight, the universal dream. I'll try and be in tune too. For those who wish to see. So instead of that, it's more living in the limelight, the universal dream. For those who wish to see. So getting closer. Now that the accent is closer to being there, um, the one last thing that I would do is the actual quality, the tone of my voice. Now, I'm going to caution you, if you don't already sound similar to that, it's going to be really hard to get that kind of expression, that kind of tone. You can do it. I know a lot of people that can. But singing it for an entire song, let alone an entire night, is pretty tiring if you have to do a lot of work to get that. So I'm just going to caution ahead of time, if you try this and say, hey, I can do that, uh, be careful that you're not like straining yourself or working too hard. Because if you do, you're not going to be able to do this for very long and you're going to probably hurt yourself. So for me, um, the where I my voice is different than Getty's, I'm a little more resonant. I think my throat's just a little bit wider. He also has a little more um, resonance up in his sinus cavities. Not quite nasal, a little bit. But we're not talking Bob Dylan or 1950s Jerry Lewis kind of nasal. Not that exaggerated stuff. If you... If you're a comedian and you're trying to imitate somebody, a lot of times you'll harp. You'll pick on something specific that's unique about their voice and then you'll exaggerate it for effect. And, you know, for comedic effect, that's going to work. But for singing, you don't want it to sound like a parody. You don't want to sound like you're making fun of them and you're because you're not, right? You're trying to emulate their style and the feel. So for that, what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to take my regular voice and I am going to have it be a little bit more nasal. Not a lot, but just a little bit more residence up in the sinus cavities. And then... I'm going to take, and this is where different people are going to have to think about this differently. I have a feeling if I explain it like this, it may not make sense to everybody. But what I do is I take the air coming out of my throat going up here, and I just push it forward just a little bit. Make it just a little bit thinner. Not a lot. I'm not constricting or anything like that. But I'm just focusing the air a little bit more out. So making it a little less resonant down here, and then a little bit more in the sinuses. So it's going to make me sound thinner. 
but not so much so that it sounds like I'm like trying to sound like him, if that's if that makes sense. It's just a slightly different tone that I'm going to be using. Okay. So first, there's my voice. Living in the limelight, the universal dream. Then there's me doing Getty. Living in the limelight, the universal dream. So not that much different. Right? You should be able to hear a little bit. What I'll do is I'll start singing just myself, and then I'll transition into Getty for the second half of, of the phrase. Living in the limelight, the universal dream, for those who wish to see. And so you can hear it. There's a little bit, little bit of nasalness in there. And it may even be a slightly bit more exaggerated than he might have. But that's going to get completely lost um, among the rest of the, of the song. And I'm also, I'm not going to... I'm not going to go any further than that. So, with that said, um, what I'll do now is I will add the backing tracks, the rest of the song, uh, with me singing it, so you can hear the end result of adding, starting with the shape of the song, adding the style of the song, adding the pronunciation that Getty would use, and then adding just a little bit of the tone that he would use. Okay? So, this is uh, me and most of Rush. Well, actually, all of Rush, just minus the singing. Living in the limelight, the universal dream For those who wish to see Those who wish to be Must put aside the alienation Get on with the fascination The real relation, the underlying theme And so one other thing you're going to see me do, and you see musicians do this all the time when they're singing, is my head's moving while I'm singing. That's not just for show. That's not just um, something to make it look like I'm really into the music. I'm actually using that to help push certain certain tones out. So when you see me say do something like seem, and you see the seem, me going up and down, that's partially... Um, for emotive activity, but it's also to make this just a little bit easier to have the air flow through for that scene part. Okay. Now, again, everyone's different. Everyone's going to have a different physicality when they are singing. And that's just for me, that's what I do. So with that said, thank you for watching. I hope you found this interesting. If you have any questions or want me to go into more detail about any of the stuff that I was, I was just covering, leave a, leave a message down below. Let me know what you think. Um, if you like this, hit the like button. If you want to see more of this, hit the subscribe button. We don't, we're not trying to beg you or anything like that. It's just good for YouTube analytics to know who to, um, to serve this stuff to if people find it interesting. Um, so with that said, everybody have a great evening and I will see you again, hopefully out there on the road soon. Take care.